Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new Wi-Fi vendor. They will be getting into other things like switching and firewalls, but that has yet to come. So the APs that we're going to be looking at today are from Alta Labs, and they sent these to me about a week and a half ago. I've been trying them out and they actually work really well. So firstly, I'm going to show you what comes in the box with their access points, and then we'll go through some of the specs and then we'll get it set up and go through all of the settings. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit MacTelecomNetworks.com. I do have a Discord server and affiliate links down below. So now let's go ahead and take a closer look at what comes in the box with the Alta Lab access points. Okay, so Alta Lab sent me two different access points. This one is the AP6 Professional, and then we just have the AP6. This one does 4x4 MIMO and the AP6 does 2x2. Two two. Let's see what comes in the box. At the very top, we have our access point, which is in this pill shape, which I like the design of that. And then we have this long LED. We have the sort of radiator at the back, and then we have a reset button. The one concern that people have had is if you push this too hard onto the wall, that it will reset as it's not like one of those small little pinholes. And then on the inside, we have our one gigabit ethernet interface. Below that, we have the mounting kit for the access point, which looks pretty cool. And it has this little V shape. I'm not sure if I'm going to mount this to my wall or not. They've also done a really good job of packaging. So we could see that we have all of our screws and anchors, and then we have these little feet. And this clip here looks like it's supposed to be for a drop ceiling. The other access point is exactly the same, so we're not going to open up the box for that. So after looking at the design of the access point in the packaging, you might be able to tell that some of the employees at Alta Labs were ex-Ubiquity employees, which is great because it's always good to have competition in the field. I'm just on the Alta Labs webpage. I'll put the link in the description below. But if we search down, we can see they have this little chart which says what access point is right for you. So we'll start with the AP6. It's Wi-Fi 6, it has Bluetooth. We have content filtering right on the access point. It's 1024 QAM. It has a three gigabit max Wi-Fi rate and it's powered by PoE or a PoE injector, but it is not weatherproof, so you can't put this outside. Now the AP6 Pro also has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, content filtering, but it has 4096 QAM. And it also has a max Wi-Fi rate of 6.3 gigabits per second. It's powered by PoE and it is weatherproof with IP54. Now to be able to start configuring these access points, they need to be connected to our network, which mine is connected to my Ubiquiti gear and my UDM SE. Then we have to go to log in. If you don't have an account, we could sign up for account or you could sign in with Google. I already have an account, so I'm gonna sign in. And this is the Alta Lab dashboard. This is all in the cloud. Currently, they don't have a local controller, which a lot of people would like. And they did say that it would come out later in the next year. But this is the dashboard and we see it says home base. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new site. So I'm just going to click on the drop down arrow and we're going to add a new site. From here, I'm going to call the site YouTube. And then you could pick an icon if you'd like. I'll click this little cloud. Once that's done, we're going to press confirm. Now the new site is configured. We need to bring the access point into our controller. All I've done is plug the AP6 Professional into my switch and it's grabbed a DHCP address. If we look over network, we can see that there's one there. Now it's showing us the name, which says new AP. It's showing IP load devices address, which is the MAC address, and then the current firmware version, the colors, and the status. We'll get into colors a little bit later. I'm going to press set up. So you can see how quick that adoption process was. It took probably two seconds and it's already connected. Now with it being connected, we could do a couple of things. It has no name, but if we click on the name, I'll just call this first floor. We could see the new IP address that was assigned to it, 192.168.7.201. And then we could see the load. So if we click over here, it's going to show us our system load, memory load, and then the uptime. We could also see that it's on channel 36 and the load of that channel. We can see the devices that are connected to it, which there currently aren't any, and then the version, the colors, and then the status. So the status will show us real time of what bandwidth is going through it. Now we can dive deeper into the access point settings, but I'm gonna do that after we create a couple Wi-Fi names. So if we go over to our settings wheel, this is where we're gonna do all our settings and create our Wi-Fi networks. So to create a Wi-Fi network, all we need to do is click add new. Now here we're gonna specify the Wi-Fi SSID. And one cool thing with Alta Labs, we could create a multi-password SSID. So we would have one SSID and then different passwords that would associate to different networks or different VLANs. So we'll create that multi-password SSID. And this is also known as PPSK or private pre-shared key. Other vendors like TP-Link, they do it as well as Cambium. 
So I'm going to call this SSID Mocha, which is my cat sitting back there. We have our Wi-Fi security, so we could either use a password, we could do enterprise, or we could have it open. Now under password, we have a couple different options down here, and I'm going to tell you what those mean. Alta Labs already has pretty good documentation, but for a standard network, the typical network with less than 100 Wi-Fi devices, large would be a couple of hundred or thousands of devices. IoT is restricted to the internet and local incoming connections only. And then internet is restricted to internet only. And then we have guest, which is restricted to internet and IOT devices. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna leave them all at standard. In this first one, we'll just get the IP of 192.168.7.x, which is the default network for this. So I'm just gonna put in a password of test1234. Now, if we click on the standard, we could also specify a VLAN, which we won't be doing, and we could rate limit the speeds. We could bypass the hotspot, ignore schedule and then bypass filter. Now I'm gonna to wanna to create a second password. So this password I'm gonna associate with the VLAN that it's on. So it'll be test 101. 101 is the VLAN that I created in my firewall. So I'll click on standard, we'll scroll down and then we'll put that VLAN number. And you can see now beside it, it's showing us our VLAN ID and it's also standard, which is great. I'll do one more, which is VLAN 102. And we're gonna put a password of test 102 click on the standard and then associate it to that VLAN number. For VLAN 102, I'm gonna give it a speed limit of 10 by 10. Now, if we scroll down below, you can see that this is assigned to YouTube's site. If we wanted to spread this across different sites, we could also add that. And it's under the color group of black, which is all APs. If we click on advanced settings, this will tell us our default network VLAN, which is VLAN 1. Also, we could scroll down and we could change some things within this Wi-Fi SSID. I'm going to leave it on default as is. Now, I couldn't save it because it requires me to do a password of at least eight characters. So we're just going to add one more character in there. So it'll be test 1011 and test 1022. If we scroll down, now we're going to be able to save. Now I've disabled my ethernet adapter and we're going to connect to the first password of this Mocha SSID. So I'll click down and then we'll find that we only have the one SSID of Mocha, even though it's associated to three different networks. So I'll click on it and then we're going to press connect. The first password for our default network was test1234. And you can see that we're connected. I'm going to bring up a command prompt and then do IP config. Once we do IP config, we should get an IP out of 192.168.241, which we are. So we're not going to get into iperf test or anything like that, but I will do a speed test and my connection is three gig by three gig. So let's go ahead and test it. So on my computer, I was getting 368 down by 772 up. The problem with doing speed tests and iperf test in everybody's environment is different. So your results are gonna vary. Now I've also got open speed tests running on my Synology NAS. So this will be from my computer to my NAS. So let's start the test. So for open speed tests, we're getting 504 down by 796 up. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go into my Wi-Fi network and we're gonna forget this network. I'm gonna reconnect using VLAN 102, which did have that rate limit. So we'll click back on Mocha and then we're gonna press connect. Here we're gonna enter the password of test 1022 and then press next and if we go back to our command line we press up for ip config you could see that it's now put us on that new vlan of 192.168.102.241 opening up speed test again i'm going to press go and you could see that that rate limit is working our download was a little bit higher at 10.34 and our upload was 9.92 now i'm going to go back to the network settings and i'm going to assign this wi-fi ssid to a color group the color group, if you associate an AP with that same color, it will grab whatever SSIDs that you have associated to that color to the AP. Right now, the color group is black, so that's all APs. We're going to get rid of that, and I'm just going to add this to blue. Once I add this to blue, I'll press save. We will lose connectivity because this AP isn't assigned to that group yet. Now, I've hooked my computer back up via Ethernet. We're going to go over to Network. So for this access point, the floor one, you could see currently it only has the color black. So we're gonna click on this AP. Now there's a bunch of different things that we could do with this access point. We had set the channel and the bandwidth for the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. And you can see here which color it's associated with. So I'm gonna click on edit and we're gonna add it into the blue network because I did lose connectivity. Now that that's done, we're gonna press save. If we look under our settings of this access point, we could see the network, it has a DHCP address, but you could set that to static, 
We have our management VLAN. We have fallback upon failure feature. And then we have always on, which by default is disabled. I hope that they just include this to be enabled in a firmware update. But the always on, what this means, it enables the Wi-Fi to broadcast even if your internet is out. So if you have resources within your local area network that you need to reach, you still can. And then we have LED colors. We could have it white, we could have it blue, or we could have it off. Now I'm back on that default Wi-Fi network of Mocha. And one really cool thing about these access point is the environment scan. So when we do a scan, it doesn't kick us off of the network. And there's two different type of scans, quick scan and full scan. And it takes between five and 15 seconds. And they tell you that it shouldn't interrupt. So let's bring up a command prompt. And under the command prompt, I'm gonna do a consistent ping towards Google. And then we're gonna run a full scan. So let's go ahead and do that. So the full scan actually did knock me out for a couple of seconds. So I'm gonna keep this consistent ping going and we're gonna do a quick scan. So the quick scan is now running and once it's done, which it's done already, we didn't notice any loss. So maybe they need to do some tweaking for that full scan, but either way, it was relatively quick. So one really cool thing about their scans, you could see the interferes and the top one is this Dolores one. Then we have Mac Telecom camera and a couple more, which we could scroll down. Also, we could see underneath the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz, the most utilized channels. Now clicking on these channels, it will tell you different information. So right now we're on one, which the RF utilization is 45%. If we click on channel six, it's 34%. And you could also tell that they have a couple different triangles. So there's one blue and then there's one that is purple. And the purple triangle on the right represents the number of interferes on that channel. And the blue triangle on the left shows you the signal strength of the top interferer on that channel. And the last thing that we'll quickly take a look at is the dashboard after we have some traffic going through it. So we could see our network activity in real time. And then we could go down and filter from one hour, two days or two months. Obviously we haven't been running it that long. We'd also see our top active devices, Mac Telecom, which is my computer. And then I did have my cell phone on here and we have the top active applications. We'd see that I've been using Discord. If we click on the drop down arrow, it will tell us the upload and the download. And this is also in real time. We'd also see the top active network devices, which is really great to see right on the main dashboard. So that's gonna be it for this video on the first official look at Alta Labs access points. I do think they're really good. They have been working well throughout the week that I've been testing them. Now, like anything, this is still a new company. So hopefully they start pushing out other products like switches, which I think they do have coming soon, as well as firewalls. And one of the biggest concerns is having the ability to have a local controller. So I hope that comes sooner than later. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of Alta Labs. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.